Hello everyone, welcome to another session from Uplets. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview about events and listeners in servlets. So let us try to understand what is meant by an event. Any change in the state of an object is called as an event. Okay, and listeners are uh, classes which gets notified once an event occurs. So in order to get a notification, so listeners should be registered so that once the event happens, it will get a notification from the event. So I would like to show you a PPT. So here, so I gave you a general uh, discussion uh, about uh, uh, this events and listeners. This was general discussion about events and listeners. So let us try to understand from the servlet perspective, what are uh, events and listeners in case of a servlet. So changing the state of an object is known as an event and application events provides notification of a change in the state of the servlet context or of an HTTP session object. So application events like, uh, these are the examples for application events that can happen in case of a servlet like uh, changes have, that is changes in the state of servlet context. We know that once, whenever a web application is deployed on the container, a servlet context object will be created by the container and it will be shared by the all the servlets, okay? Now, each web app and uh, the HTTP, HTTP is a stateless protocol and an HTTP session object is created in order to maintain the session or to manage the session. So once a change in any of these events happens, you can write listeners which gets notified. So you write even listener classes that responds to these changes in states and you configure and deploy them in a web application. The servlet container generates events that cause even listener classes to do something. So you can write code in these listener classes like creating a table or creating a database connection so that you don't have to create a table in the database. Uh, one, this listener, this listener will be called by the container and so the code inside the listener gets automatically executed, okay? So, uh, so whatever you want to do upon the uh, starting of the uh, web application, you can write some code inside that. Examples I said, like it can be the, uh, it can be like kind of creating a connection object and you can call that connection object from the listener. Uh, then you can create a table inside the uh, listener class. In other words, the servlet container calls the methods on a user's event listener class. Once we do a program, it will be more clear. Now, the following is an overview of this process. The user creates an event listener class that implements one of the listener interfaces. This implementation is registered in the deployment descriptor. Now, once the user creates an event listener class, he has to register that uh, listener class in the web.xml or you can use annotation-based configuration in case of the new version of servlets. At deployment time, the servlet container constructs an instance of the event listener class. This is why the public con constructor must exist, okay? At runtime, the servlet container invokes on the instance of the listener class. For servlet context events, the, the event listener classes can receive notification when the web application is deployed or undeployed and when attributes are added, removed or replaced. So I said that there can be events like servlet context events and HTTP session events and there can be request uh, events, etc. and so on. So uh, what happens is that they, the, for, in order to listen to this particular event, there are listeners called as servlet context listeners, okay? And they will receive notification uh, uh, from when the web application is deployed or undeployed and when attributes are added, removed or replaced. So this, uh, this listener will be notified when attributes will be added, uh, when attributes are removed, when attributes are replaced, etc. Now, a good example of this is keeping track, a practical example is keeping track, application we are telling, is keeping track of the number of concurrent clients using a web application. Suppose I want to find out what time a person logged in and logged out, I can do that by using a listener. So we will be doing examples later, so we'll, you will understand more. This functionality can be done with what you currently know of server. So is it necessary to, in order to create listener, should you learn something you know? With whatever uh, things you have learned so far, you can create a listener. It can much more easily be done using that waits for a client to start a new session. The greater point being presented here is that a container can be used to notify web application of important events and servlet event listeners are the mechanism. Okay, hope you understood. Now, all of the servlet event listeners, now how do we write an event? So you can write a Java class that implements the 
particular listener and all these listeners are interfaces there are event listener interfaces for all of the important events related to a web application and servlets in order to be notified of events a custom class which implements the correct listener interface needs to be coded and the listener class needs to be deployed via web.xml or by annotation all of the servlet event listeners are mentioned some of the event listeners i am mentioning the uh, first let me show you the event classes then we will show the uh, listener classes so there can be servlet request event context event session event okay basically request context and session so there are servlet request event servlet context event servlet request attribute event servlet context attribute event http session event http session binding event and these are some of the event interfaces so we said about the event classes now these are the interfaces that is servlet request listener request attribute listener servlet context listener servlet context attribute listener http session listener http session attribute listener binding listener activation listener etc now we are going to do a program first for the servlet context uh, event and servlet context listener the servlet context event is notified when the web application is deployed on the serv server so when does this event happens whenever your web application is deployed this event happens that is a servlet context event is notified if you want to perform some action at the time of deploying the web application so just creating database connection as i said before or creating all the tables of a project etc you need to implement the servlet context listener interface and provide the implementation of its methods so let me tell you servlet context event happens when the web application is uh, deployed on the server and uh, if you want to serve uh, perform some action at the deployment time you can write that code inside the listener because as i said the listeners will be notified once the event happens an instance of that will be created at the time of uh, project deployment and uh, it will be uh, this this uh, particular object will be called during the run time okay so if you want to perform some action at the time of power deployment such as database connection if you want to create a connection object if you want to band, create tables for your project then you can do that inside the listener okay servlet so context uh, listener and let us try to understand as you know i said said these listeners are basically they are interfaces so we all of us knows that interface mm -hmm. contains uh, contains methods and it is the implement the duty of the implementation class to override the methods okay so uh, let us try to understand which are the methods that are declared inside the interface so there are two methods declared in the servlet context listener interface which must be implemented by the servlet programmer to perform some action such as creating database connections so if user has to implement uh, this interface called as servlet context listener and then he has to override once you implement the method all the methods written inside the method has to be overridden uh, you cannot uh, like uh, also, uh, so there are two methods and it is mandatory that these two methods has to be overridden so implemented okay so these are the methods they are context initialized and context destroyed and both have the argument of servlet context event okay and uh, this satisfier being passed to these two methods as an argument this is invoked when when servlet context this uh, event uh, so serv sorry servlet context initialized is invoked when application is deployed on the server and context destroyed is invoked when application is undeployed from the server so uh, that is all from this video so we understood what is a serv listener and what is an event and even to something hap which happens once the once there is a change in the state of an object and listener is something which gets notified once an event uh, occurs so presently i am discussing about the servlet context event and the listener of the servlet context event is servlet context listener and this particular listener is an interface and uh, if you have to uh, do something by at the time of do some task at the same time of project deployment then what you can do is you can write that code inside this listener and this listener has got uh, two methods and uh, you have to implement those two methods this class implementation class should override these two methods and they are they are context initialized and context dis destroyed so continue watching next video i am going to do a uh, program using this servlet context event and i will be writing an implementation class which implements this servlet context listener interface thank you so much